Hi YouTube, finally coming at you with my new Ryzen 3000 series build. I've been playing this for months now actually. I just got my motherboard in today from Newegg, so I'm all ready to do my build. This cost me about $1650 if you count with the what I originally paid for each of these parts, like I bought this video card last October, so like nine months ago now. Uh, and I bought that SSD four or five months ago, so yeah, about $1650 pre-tax for all of this stuff. Pretty happy with it. I'll go ahead and I'll go over the components I got for it, and then I'll go into doing a time lapse, time lapse of the actual build. So to start off, I of course went with the Ryzen series. That's a 3700X right there. Uh, I was definitely pretty happy to see the benchmarks coming from AMD because it seems like Intel's really been the the, uh, the leaders for quite a few years, but AMD's finally punching back. And I decided on the 3700X because it was really the best price to performance ratio. I feel like the 3900X and above were a little bit more beefy than I needed. I really didn't need 12 cores, um, but I could easily afford a 3700X. And the 3800X was basically the same thing, just clocked a little bit higher with a much larger price tag on it. So definitely going to be pretty happy with this guy. It comes with the RGB cooler, which should be pretty beautiful. Then for RAM, I've got 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z RGB. That's a 3200 megahertz. 3600 megahertz is, is about the sweet spot, but it's, I decided I wouldn't really need, need RAM quite that fast, um, if you can sense the RGB theme going on right now. I decided to go with RGB because it was only like $10 more expensive, you know, so why not? That was about 160 bucks, which is great because this same RAM last year would have been more like $250 plus, dollars, and now it's 160 so that's great. Um, I've got the, let's see, I'll do the motherboard next. The ASRock X570 Phantom Gaming 4. I was actually thinking about buying the X470 instead, but the issue with that was that it wouldn't support Ryzen 3000 out of the box, which I definitely need because I don't have any other AM4 CPU that I can use to upgrade the BIOS. That, and I really just want forwards compatibility. I don't have any PCI Express 4.0 devices right now, and I probably won't for a while, but just in case I have to decide that I want a PCIe 4.0 device, Got the motherboard for it, and just in case, you know, I end up upgrading my Ryzen CPU in a couple of years, this is more likely to support it. Although, of course, the VRMs and all that with these lower, uh, lower expense X570 boards tend to not be quite as good, I hear. But mind you, I'm not overclocking 3900X on this machine. I'm really just using a 3700 3700X at stock speeds, so I really don't think I'm going to have any issues with this motherboard. I compared the features to that of like $200 plus motherboards, and honestly. A lot of what you end up paying for in the higher-end boards is VRMs, which I really don't need uh, to be that fancy, and aesthetics. And I'm not going to drop 40 additional dollars on aesthetics and one more USB port. So, yeah. Uh, for a video card, I've got the GeForce GTX 1070 Ti. I bought this nine months ago for $400. Oh, and that was 155 by the way. I bought this for 400 bucks last October, so nine months ago. Still going strong. Still a super, uh, super nice GPU. Definitely pretty happy with it. I don't feel like I need to buy the RTX series quite yet. I'll probably wait another year. Although I am eyeing the 5700 XT once the AIBs come out for those guys, but I'm definitely happy with this card. So this is one of the components I'm transferring over from my 2012 build. My 2012 build is kind of funny. It had probably, I don't know, six or seven different graphics cards in over its entire life so far. Um, just thought I'd mention that. Upgrade that quite a bit. Now for storage, I've got the XPG SX8200 Pro. I absolutely love this SSD. It's one terabyte. I did a dumb thing. I bought it like three or four months ago for $175. Now it dipped to below $120 on Amazon and Newegg. So if I waited a little while longer, I would have got it for a cheaper price. But I ran it in my 2012 build for, I don't know, four or five months. Um, I couldn't make it my boot drive because, you know, motherboards from 2012 don't really support UEFI or uh, NVMe boot. But I got some use out of it, so I guess it kind of justifies having bought it for the higher price. But reads 3.5 gigabytes per second and writes about 2.5 gigabytes per second, which is pretty damn fast. Definitely going to be happy with it as my boot drive. I could have got a PCI Express 4.0 device, but I feel like, you know, they're I think they're almost double the price. And who cares if your disk is 3.5 gigabytes or 5 right, like read speed. It really doesn't matter. It's diminishing returns there. So I think this is probably the best. Uh, bang for your buck SSD while still being pretty kick-ass. Now, for my power supply, I got the Seasonic Focus Plus Gold. Uh, at least I think it's a Focus Plus. <laughs> so, yeah, Focus Plus Gold. Uh, it's a 650 watt 
because that's all I really need. My old builds, I used to, you know, get power supplies that were way too big. Like my 2009 build with the Core 2 Duo, I got a kilowatt power supply for it, which is completely overkill. But I've learned, I've learned my lesson, especially with the power savings of a 7 nanometer CPU. So 650 watt it is. This had a $25 mail-in rebate, um, and I bought it for $85, so it should effectively be 60 bucks once I receive that prepaid card, which is a pretty damn good deal. And Seasonic is a good brand, so I hear, and it's an 80 plus gold power supply, so I should not have any problems there. And then I've also got a 4TB Seagate Barracuda hard disk, 7.2K, that I transferred from my system. I've been running this guy since uh, late last year, I think. It costs about $102 on Amazon, so that was a pretty good deal. And it's really just for Steam games and stuff. In fact, I've already got like, a couple terabytes of Steam games on it. I really just unplugged it from my old desktop and I'm going to plug it into my new one and import everything. So that should work pretty beautifully. And the last thing I'll mention is my Sinosa Chroma Pro. Actually, I haven't mentioned the case yet, but I'll do that in a sec. This was about 80 bucks. The only difference between a Sinosa Chroma and the Sinosa Chroma Pro is that this one has an LED um, underglow, which costs you an additional $20. It looks cool, I guess. I don't, I don't know if I really needed that, but it's a cool motherboard, or wow. It's a cool keyboard. Uh, it's kind of, it's a mecha membrane, they call it. So it kind of feels like a mechanical keyboard, but it's actually a membrane, which I like, personally, because I was never really a fan of how noisy mechanical keyboards are, especially because I don't live alone. So I'm happy with it so far. I'm using it on my current build. And then for a case, I got the Cooler Master, Masterbox MB530P. They call it Showroom Ready. It's kind of its slogan. It looks pretty cool. It doesn't have any USB-C on the front, but I got some little adapters for that, so no worries. Um, you'll see plenty of this case as I build the machine, of course. I am a little bit puzzled by the how um, tinted that tempered glass is. It looks really dark with the human eye, anyway. I don't know if it's going to be too dim, but it's also possible in my mind that with all my RGB stuff, um, it'll end up lighting up the, ca the, the, uh, the case like a Christmas tree. So we'll see if it's too dim, too bright, hopefully somewhere in between. But I think it'll be a very nice case. So anyway, I'm going to quit yapping now and put on my camera to time-lapse mode to start building this thing. Uh, I do have a motherboard, or a wow, motherboard. I do have a monitor here just so I can put the components on the motherboard and make sure everything works because we all know that RAM and motherboards like being DOA sometimes. So um, I will mix that into the time-lapse. So here goes nothing. I'm fiddling with my Google Pixel, just so you know. Um, that was actually super quick just to get things plugged in. Obviously, it looks like crap. Hopefully, my cables aren't in the fans here. But I should be about good to go. Um, everything's plugged into the power supply. I've got my old keyboard here, a little monitor set up. I plugged in the only the power switch bit from the case here. So I can hit the power switch. Instead of trying to short it out with a screwdriver, which could be iffy if I miss. So I'll go ahead and switch the power supply on now. Okay, no smoke, that's good. Uh, I'm not seeing any lights on the motherboard. And let's just go ahead and hit that power supply and see if anything happens. My monitor is on, or hit the button, I mean. So we have power, of course. I accidentally opened the monitor menu there, but that shouldn't matter. The fans just kicked up. It's not beeping, at least. That's good. Ooh, that is a really pretty uh, CPU cooler. I never actually realized my uh, my GPU had these lights up front here. I, I, I never saw the underside of it like that. I, don't, I only ever saw the top bit. That's kind of funny. Yeah, the fans keep kicking up for some reason, so I'm not sure what's going on there. There we go. F2 or delete. Spamming F2. Cool.
cool. I do not have a mouse plugged in, so I can't do everything here, but I can at least go to main. We can see I've got my CPU at 3600 megahertz, 32 gigs of RAM. Ooh, GDR4-2133. Well, it has XMP, so I should definitely be able to clock that up to, uh, up to the proper speed. Let's go ahead and load XMP setting for DDR4-3200. Ooh, it even supports 33... Ooh, wow. No, I think it only goes 3200, so let's do that. Hit escape. Uh, go over to boot, or exit rather. Save changes and exit. Let's see if we can get it going at 3200. Okay, here we have it, DDR4 3200, looks good. CPUs there are happy. All right, sweet, I should just have to put it in the case now. Pretty nice. So I got to boot up into the Windows installation now, um, which I'll talk about in a second, but it was making a very ugly rattling noise. I found out it was actually just the entire case vibrating a little bit, so I kind of just resituated a little bit, and it's fine now. My Windows 10 installation meter was goofed up. I used Rufus to make it, so um, I didn't, it didn't enable UEFI boot, so I went ahead and, uh, and used the Windows 10 media creation tool to redownload Windows 10 all over again, which only took a few minutes, and plop it on that USB. I put on the stickers from the CPU, RAM, and motherboard. I don't know if I like them like that. Maybe I'll tear them off in a couple days. I don't know, but for now, I think they look okay. All right, so I went ahead and cleaned my one terabyte NVMe disk. So if I refresh this, it should give me a much simpler listing. There we go, drive one, unallocated space. I did plug in my NVMe disk down there. Uh, one, so I can see it. Two, so my camera can't focus. Uh, and three, so it gets a little bit better cooling under the uh, instead of being under the GPU. I checked the motherboard specifications; it shouldn't be any slower to be in that slot. I mean, it is farther away from the CPU, but I don't think electricity cares about a couple inches because it's going pretty much at the speed of light. So, cute. So I'm gonna install to my NVMe disk and see how that goes. So it's the next day here. I actually did some more work yesterday, and then I had to go to work today, so it's the next evening, but um, it's finally all working. You know, I'm plugged in, Windows is going, everything seems fairly happy. I did run into a few weird issues, so the first is wh of which is that that CPU cooler fluctuates the speed up and down and up and down. You know, it's quiet and it goes, and it goes down again and up and down. And the reason for that is because my CPU temperatures actually fluctuate quite a bit. If we look at the uh, ASRock Phantom Gaming tuning here, the temperature likes to go between 30 and 50 degrees Celsius usually. It seems pretty consistent at 38 right now actually, but what's been doing is, you know, dipping down and hot, then spiking up and dipping down and spiking up. Might have something to do with the voltages. Uh, this page seems frozen, I don't actually trust it right now, but it usually hangs around 1.4 volts. V-Core just idling, which seems a little bit much to me. Uh, I did some research online, other people have found similar issues. They found that um, the Ryzen is the same thing, the, you know, the voltage seems a little high, and the temperatures do that peak and trough over and over again, it causes the fans to cycle. So what I did was I edited my uh, fan curve a little bit to not really be a curve at all. Uh, once it hits around 80 degrees, it goes to 100%. So until the CPU gets pretty darn hot, it's not going to... Uh, knock up the fan speed very much. Which is good because it's much more relaxed right now. I don't even notice it cycling like it was before, which was pretty annoying. Only downside is that uh, I need to wait for Windows to boot, actually start up, to log in, and for this app to start automatically before that change takes effect each time. So uh, before I actually log into Windows, it does the cycling thing, which is kind of annoying. Pretty bizarre. Hopefully there's a BIOS update to fix that at some point. Um, 
I, I tried updating my UEFI and all that stuff, uh, and the only solution was really just edit, to edit the fan curve that I could tell. Although I did also add an undervolt, 0 0.05 of V-core undervolt, which it's, yeah, here we go, yeah, there we go. V-core voltage offset, 0 0.05 volts, so I'm going to keep the voltage a little bit lower and maybe keep that temperature from spiking as much. I put the CPU under some load, it hasn't had any issues, so I'm not too worried about that. So as far as the RGB stuff goes, I think overall it looks pretty nice. This camera doesn't pick it up quite so nicely. I should really get a better camera, but um, I would like some more RGB, honestly. <laughs> it's got plenty in the front, plenty around the CPU and RAM, but the back and the bottom are a little bit dim. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy these RGB strips that I've got in my shopping cart. Um, these guys right here, they're on sale right now on flash sale for 15 bucks. The reviews are pretty good. I looked them up. They have their own integrated controller, or I can split them off of um, the motherboard or this controller up here, which is super nice. So I'm probably just going to pick those up, probably throw one in here hidden behind that bezel and one up here hidden behind there that illuminates the inside of the case a little bit more because it is fairly dark. The only source of confusion here is that um, I'm using addressable RGB, which is a 3-pin header, and a lot of RGB splitters and stuff that you find on Amazon and extenders are 4-pin. They're not interchangeable. If you cut that pin off, they're different uh, actual pin layouts with the voltages and all that. So I'm having trouble finding any addressable RGB 3-pin uh, actual like, extenders or anything like that. So it might be a little bit um, difficult to make that work because I only have one adjustable RGB header on my motherboard that's being used by my CPU cooler, which I could plug into the USB RGB header. Um, so I'm just thinking about it. There's a lot of technicalities. I might go ahead and uh, I might, I might just have to work off my case's RGB controller. So this gives out one male connector. I'd split that into two or three. Um, one of which goes into these three fans because it has its own splitter. One would go to the CPU fan, maybe. One would go to um, you know each of the RGB strips that I put in. So that's a little bit complicated, but uh, it would be nicer if the software actually worked. But unfortunately, when I go to boot up the Phantom Gaming, I'm not even going to try it. But the Phantom Gaming, they asked my Phantom, um, not the Phantom Gaming. What am I saying? The polychrome RGB tool just hangs. It just doesn't work. That's a known issue online. They haven't fixed it, so it seems I've tried some fixes with command prompt, but none of them seem to work. So I guess I just can't use my motherboard's RGB customization tool. Thanks, AS Rock. But I'm not too pissed off because, you know, the integrated controller here works fine. I could run more, even more RGB stuff all off the integrated controller in the case. I've had some splitters. Um, this guy, the, 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 the CPU cooler, is working off the motherboard controller, but thankfully the default setting is the setting I prefer where it actually kind of cycles through the different colors there. So I'm happy for now not actually customizing my RGB profiles or anything like that. Um, I think I'm just going to buy some more RGB strips and maybe even an RGB rear fan if I can find one that actually satisfies my price and review uh, standards. So. And then I'll go ahead and get some adapters and figure out the rest of my crap then. But for now, I am uh, pretty happy. I mean, the benchmarks aren't that different, to be honest with you. Which I kind of expected because my, my video card's the, uh, my video card is the bottleneck right now. If I, if I go to these benchmarks I ran. This is a benchmark I ran with my i7-3820 a few months back. I overclocked that thing to 4.5 gigahertz. Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, it's fantastic. I do really uh, like the information it gives me. Max settings at 1440p. What we see is average FPS of 57. And uh, a, a uh, what am I looking for here? GPU bound 95%, which means that 95% of the time, it's my GPU that's a slower uh, factor, slowest link. So then if I go to my newest benchmark, Um, same settings at 1440p. We can see that the CPU is much faster. It took less time to render each frame, much less so than the i7. So it's clear the CPU is straight up better. Um, but now we're GPU bound by 100% versus 95, and it's the same average FPS. <laughs> it rendered a few more frames, so I think it might be technically a little bit higher, but it's pretty clear to me that the, uh, the slowest link here is my is my 1070 Ti, which is actually okay because you know that's still a really powerful GPU, 
And the fact that my CPU kicks its ass means that I don't have to swap out my CPU for quite a few years, which I'm happy with. I also ran a benchmark at 1080p, and we're still almost like, no, we, we are, in fact, completely GPU bound. Actually, it says 95% for some reason, um, which is interesting. But at any rate, yeah, so I'll probably upgrade my GPU in a few years. Let's see. I mean, the 1070 Ti is more than powerful enough, but overall, I am pretty happy. Um, like I said, a few of those weird issues going on that I'm not completely cool with, but, you know, it is what it is. I edited the fan curve. It's not so annoying anymore, and I'm sure we'll figure out the, uh, the RGB stuff as time goes on. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I'll probably make some update videos as time goes on, and thank you for, uh, thank you for watching my video.